really good. good. I've Enjoy seen two it. episodes. Good. Nice. Yeah. I can't binge watch, you see. I just, I have to take my time, even before yes. John's Yes, well, that, you're the first person to say that, and mm. we appreciate your taking the time to relish yes. each episode. Yeah, <laughs> I really am. Significance. So what, one of the things I loved about it, I love this version of the present day, because it's not so reliant on kind of technology. Having now been in these characters and been in this world, can you see the appeal to that, to that, that sort of way of life? Can you see the appeal of being young when I was? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> I don't know, the 50s were... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm really going in on a this morning. Yeah. No, I think, so. I think so. I think so. I think none of us are particularly savvy with tech, though, sure. in, yeah. in our own lives. So I don't, I don't think it was that difficult of a leap, to mm. be honest. Yeah. I found it really fun. I mean, in George's room in particular, he's got like the old TV and a lot of physical yeah. media. Yeah. Um, so it's really fun to play around with. That stuff's cool now anyway, isn't it? Yeah, it's come into fashion. Like, right? Yeah. People people buy vinyl and... You, you lived in the vintage days. I yeah. did. Wow. Oh, yeah, you, know. you could stick them <laughs> in a second-hand store and I'd go for <laughs> at least 60 quid. I mean, you, I mean you're of a, gener <laughs> a, gen of a generation that grew up watching like Ghostbusters. Do you think yes. maybe some of the stuff that you watched when you were growing up plays into now what you appeal to? to telling as, as, as stories now as, a, as an adult? Oh, definitely. I, I, I think all, you know, all creative people are probably influenced by stuff they saw when they were very young, before you know how films and TV are made, before you have any kind of filter about what's good and what's bad. You just react completely instinctively when you're young. And I happen to be around in, a, in an amazing time for cinema, particularly when it was catering to, to young people so well with all those great 80s blockbusters and then teen movies in the 80s and early 90s. So, yeah, I very much want to try and make the kind of stuff like Lockwood & Co, where contemporary young people can see themselves represented on stage in a sort of exciting, interesting way. And what do you think is that sort of attracts you to telling stories of young protagonists at its core? Do you think it kind of enforces that sense of underdog? Yeah, I, I, I think all good fantasy stories, not all good fantasy stories, but a lot of good fantasy stories for young people are have young people as protagonists, right? Whether it's Disney movies where the parents or the child's always an orphan, whether it's, you know, so many books send kids out into these uh, grown into these worlds with grown up stakes because it's exciting when you're young, A to see yourself and B to see a version of yourself thrown into this circumstances that might terrify you in reality, but you're you know, able to um, live it vicariously from the comfort of your home or whatever. So, yeah, I think that's what's attractive about it. It's seeing yourself in a sort of high stakes situation. I wonder if you guys could talk a little bit about the shooting those scenes with the ghosts and what was what was kind of provided to you on set to make those kind of believable in the moment? Well, we had the, the VFX guys <coughs> were on set um, every yeah. day. The whole team was there. Well, not the whole team, but some of the team was there every day. So before you'd fight one, you'd have someone come up to you with an iPad going, this is what you're fighting, uh, this is how they move. And it was great. And then we had uh, yeah, the shmoo. The, the shmoo. shmoo with little kind of, there's dummy sort of... Um, mannequin. Looking, mannequin, that's yeah. the word. Yeah, mannequin. Like eyes without a face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The mannequin. And it lit up and so that obviously the light would reflect off of us and look like we're fighting opposite someone. Yeah. But Mikey, he was like a puppeteer and he... Um, yeah had like the schmoo on a stick and he'd like wheeled it around and he was wearing a green suit and yeah, he was really lovely. Or it would be like a, a mirror ball sort of yeah, yeah. vibe. Like or... a disco ball basically. Yeah. <laughs> Never heard of a schmoo. Was that, specific, was that new to this it's project? It's a really technical term. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the name we invented for it, the schmoo. If, you're, if you were around in the, I think late 70s, early 80s, there was a cartoon called The New Schmoo. So for some reason we called it the schmoo and it kind of stuck, it didn't stuck, it? stuck, yeah. And we all made yeah. friends with the schmoo. Well, peculiar, glowing. Unless the schmoo, unless the schmoo was, well, you know, oh, yeah. having a temper tantrum. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and obviously, there's some sword fighting in this as well. How much training goes into to that? Do you have to kind of do little sort of courses and stuff to get used to the the way to hold a sword and to use it? Little courses. Little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think mm. I think well, we all did about a month and a half, two months of mm. training um, with the stunt team, and they give you all the all, all the help you need, basically. Um, but it's amazing. It's so cool learning a new skill and yeah. kind of feeling cool. Yeah, we <laughs> learnt to kind of 
we like worked with the sword master and kind of learned how to parry and yeah. the basics of sword work and then you're like oh my god this is wow a lot <laughs> and then and then they go oh no that's just like that's just the bottom line and then we all kind of but it was great though because we all worked up and built up a vocabulary of sword work and then we're able to put it into choreography. Yeah, mm. yeah that's not a little course at all. Is no. it? Um, <laughs> but it's quite cool because sometimes, it, I've known, I spoke to an actor once, so I had to, do a, had to do a whole training and a whole course just to learn how to ride a horse while holding a sword. Mm. Is that one of the perks you think to doing what you do is learning these kind of quite unique skills that most normal people don't learn? For sure. Mm. I mean, learning how to come and set without trousers. Mm. Yeah. Learning how to... <laughs> I mean, one skill that I think I actually developed was eating the same amount of food within the oh, same time. Yeah. I mean, we had to eat, especially in the yeah. biscuit scenes, we had to eat a lot of the same biscuit. A lot of biscuits. Over and over. I, I could do that training. biscuit scene we did. Yes. And someone had given me a bit of advice <laughs> that morning going, don't eat the biscuits because you'll have to eat about 100 of them. But it was my, me and Ali had to eat the biscuits. We did yeah. have to eat the biscuits. And it was biscuits. like a really hot summer's day and they were like, quite dry and crumbling, yeah, we're yeah. like, hell, like. <laughs> the suffering. No, I mean, no. the hard life. Besides the biscuit eating, yeah. we learned. Biscuits were so dry. Yeah, honestly. No, honestly uh, we learned sword fighting, stunt fighting, and biscuits. yeah, it, it was so and much biscuits. fun. <laughs> and biscuits. I was wondering too, I mean, because it's these obviously such big roles, big sort of Netflix series. Do you remember when you first got the parts who the first person you told was? Who was the first person you told? I told my parents. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Did you call them? No, they were just... They were just... They were just... They were just in the kitchen. Yeah. 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 Yeah, they were like, wow. That, that's... Yeah. Have they seen it yet? Have they seen... Have what, they sorry? seen any of this yet? Yeah. Of the show? No, no, mm. because um, I told them when I got the role before we even started mm. filming, started our rehearsal mm. process, or even the saw training. Yeah. Ali broke his NDA. Yeah. I broke my NDA. <laughs> Are you, what? Are you going to kill I me? want to know your answers though. Who was the who were the first people you called? Yeah, yeah, I I was in my bedroom and I think my yeah, my parents were in the living room and I was like, what? I was like, oh my god, keep a lid on it. And then I just went upstairs and went, oh he's, um Yeah, you know those auditions I've been going to. I was like, God, I got the wrong. And they were like, Oh wow, oh that's great, yeah. <laughs> I called my dad. I was in a drama school rehearsal and I looked at my phone on a break and I had about 80 missed calls from my agent and uh, I called my dad and he didn't pick up and then he sent a photo of him halfway up a, a mountain in his climbing gear and oh, just went, nice. bit busy, I'll call you later. <laughs> I, went, I got the job Thumbs by the up. way and then, yeah, he sent back a photo with the really? palms up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 80 missed calls, you must have known you've got it. It'd be harsh if they were calling you 80 times to tell you you hadn't. Yeah. <laughs> just to let you down lightly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Agent. Yeah. Um, but uh, my final question really, uh, Joe, because in the past I was reading you've said you've turned down kind of franchise opportunities. So I was going to ask all of you, including yourself, Joe, is there any franchise, any character or any sort of series that if you did get offered, you simply couldn't turn down? Well, I would do I would do a Bond film. Mm -hmm. mm. Really? Uh, yeah. yeah. Because I think I feel I know where Bond should be going. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, I know where I want Bond to go. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I would love to do. I would love that. Would be my fantasy mm. Mm. to be to do a Bond film. Maybe you should cast Cameron Chapman as Bond. Yeah. yeah. Well. And me as the Bond villain. And I'll be the. The lady. Listen, the we are we are ready. <laughs> be We're ready to go. Oh yeah, you, you can be the Bond, Bond girl. Well. Oh, I'd love that. I'd love to do a villain. What about you guys? Fantasy franchise? Um, I'd love to do a biopic, like a um, really like get into the shoes of kind of a mm. a person and break that down and understand. That would be yeah, dream one day. Yeah, I've always said I'd, it's not a franchise, but I'd love to do an A twenty four film. Mm. I just want to work with Joe Cornish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like we're on with the Bond film. Yeah. Right? yeah, exactly. Let's go. Let's yeah. do it. Get the contracts. Let's go. Yeah, well, think it's season two, hopefully, first before that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you so much, guys. Thank, thank you. Very much. Cheers. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for doing it. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey You Guys. Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.